join us up there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's the story. I was put in touch with a company called Universal Audio. And they met me at the NAM show. And I have no idea about recording gear. I'm a massive, I've been using garage band for years and years. I just, I don't know things about stuff. I know about guitars and amps, pedals and pedal boards and stuff. But I don't know anything about recording gear. <clears throat> other than like distressors sound good on a vocal and a sonic maximizer does cool things to guitar and stuff. Anyway, met a nice guy and uh, he said, you know, if you want to have a thing to use it in your videos, then maybe I'll send you a thing and that's cool. And I'm like, that sounds great, man. Yeah, I mean, why not? I I I'll take a thing. Thinking that the thing was like just a simple dual input interface because uh, I've been using a Scarlet for many years and I got it. And I was like, wow, it looks really cool. It's really small. It looks really well made. And Dave went, you know what that is? And I'm like, no. What was it, Dave? <laughs> it was an Apollo Twin Quad by Universal Audio. Yeah. Which uh, looks... Something a bit like this. Obviously, this is a box, not the actual unit, um, because we're plugged into the unit. So yes. For demonstrative purposes, this is the box that it came in. In my mass ignorance, I had no idea of the quality of this product at all. I or what it's capable of. No. I had no <laughs> idea at all. I was like, oh yeah, it's just another affordable interface to plug my, my mic in, and then I can just record plugging it into my laptop. And then Dave and Rabia were both like, you know, it's probably the best miniature interface in the entire world. Yeah, well, uh, me and Beer have been using um, the Universal Audio interfaces for over a year. Probably nearly two years now, I think. Why is it so good, Dave? Uh, well, so I guess the first thing to start with an interface is the most important thing is the DAC conversion or the converters which is basically like digital to analog and analog to digital conversion. So literally the process of taking an analog signal, turning it into ones and zeros into digital and back out to your speakers. Right. Um, it's really important that that's really good because you want to try and capture as much as possible and have as much headroom and dynamic range and all that sort of stuff. And sometimes that means that you end up with lag if you haven't got a good one of those DACs. You get uh, lag. It can it can cause all sorts of issues, and and you want to make sure that when you're mixing stuff, that what you're hearing is as good as possible, and that the conversion process isn't fooling you into thinking that it sounds a different way. So, the 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 converters that are in this unit are like mastering grade, so it's it's the sort of quality that a ma you know pro mastering houses would use uh, to make sure that all the audio is completely on point and they can trust it. <laughs> That's so exciting. That's the first thing that's really key when you look at a unit like this. Um, but that is nowhere near the full potential of this little box. Um, so you can chain multiple units together. Uh -huh. um, which is just a really useful thing if you want to expand inputs and stuff because this obviously only has two um, sort of actual inputs. preamp inputs. Right. Yeah. Um, there's also a jack on the front of it um, for plugging guitar in, like we've just done. Um, so it has its own DI input. Um, but this, the reason this is a Apollo Twin Quad is it actually has a quad core DSP processor in it. <laughs> so it's basically like a computer right um, and the reason it needs a computer is I guess it, you guys are obviously going to be more familiar with guitar stuff right it's quad core it's quad core <laughs> um, and, and when you chain it with something else it, it shares the cores so octa core yes yeah, so I, I have eight cores <clears throat> because I have a rack unit that has eight, imp eight inputs on it and then one of these as well so I have right. eight cores and I also have ten inputs right um, so the reason you need the as I was saying so you've got you guys are probably more familiar with the guitar guitar stuff yeah so this is similar to like a Kemper right so a Kemper's a small little rack unit that can basically emulate hundreds of thousands of guitar amps yes and it does it really well so this does the same but the technology to do it is slightly different but it doesn't just do guitar stuff 
So obviously we're we're using guitar. Well, yeah, here we as should well. just say that all of the guitar you're hearing is this. Yeah. It's just the Apollo Twin. Yeah. So currently the signal chain we've got is a Marshall JMP. Yeah. Um, and that's running into or bef into the front of that we've got a tube screamer, Ibanez tube screamer, uh, and then I've got a Universal Audio reverb on there as well. And I've recorded with these pieces of gear gunned in real life, and this sounds like it. Check this out. <laughs> It's yeah. really good, and, and there's there's no latency. No, none. I mean, I, I, I mean, it's impossible to prove latency. But doesn't matter how fast you pick. It... Oh, you can't feel, no. let alone hear, any latency. Yeah, and and so the quad core processor is doing all of that. So normally. Uh, you know, all of these like things like the amp and the tube skimmer and stuff, they're essentially plugins like you'd have on Pro Tools or Logic, Cubase, whatever it is you're familiar with. They work like plugins and the order that you put them in is essentially the signal chain. Yeah. And so um, it's, it's, I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> but I have a question for you. Could I gig with that? Uh, I'd need to plug it into a, a power amp. I, I mean... Yes. Or I could go through PA. Or you could go straight into the PA. I mean, but you could literally take an Apollo Twin. You could, yeah, you, you, could, could. you could gig with it. Yeah, you could. And how many amps are on it? Uh, I don't know. I mean, they're constantly adding. You know, adding. Just like Kemper do. Yeah. That, you see, the difference here is that with Kemper, you you can make your own, you know, profile. You can profile that. Um, yeah. But but with a Kemper, what you're doing is you're taking a snapshot of that amp at that current stage. Yes. And it's replicating it perfectly. But it's a snapshot. Like when you start playing with the game and the bass and the treble, Kemper have done a really good job of being able to change those things. Yeah. But it's it won't ever. You know, if you take a snapshot of your RD one. Yeah. And then you turn the bass up on your your Kemper, it's not going to do the same thing that your RD one would do when you turn the bass up. It's it guessing. will add more more bass. Right. But it's just a general EQ applied to your snapshot. Okay. Whereas this now, is component by component. Yeah. So think about this as doing the same process where they take almost like an impulse response, which is what the, the snapshot is. But rather than taking a snapshot of the Marshall JMP, they'll get the gold head from Marshall and they'll make a uh, basically a computer uh, circuit diagram so that it's the same circuit board but a digital one right and then they'll strip apart their Marshall and they'll take the impulse responses of every single component and then apply that to their to their digital circuit board every single component so, yeah so that when you change things like the bass and the treble and the drive and stuff it reacts the exact way wow that the the original does so it must take ages it, yeah I mean one of their one of their amp profiles took them like two years to to do that's absolutely um, mad and you know when you buy the unit they give you a few of these plugins free um, and they're constantly doing uh, deals and, and stuff like that but you have to buy additional right um, plugins but the so, cool thing about this is as well as, like for a guitar player as well as I'm just being excited chappers now as well as just plugging a guitar in and getting an amp there are effects, and you could even put it through a desk strip. Yeah. So we could run this through a Neve. Mm -hmm. Is that what we're doing now? We're not actually, no. So but, uh, that would yeah. be really cool to do the two. So, 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 so but here's, here's the thing. Dave, I'm so excited. I know. It's the size but of a calculator. It, 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 it gets better now. <laughs> it gets better. Um, because on top of all of this stuff that's going on, all this wizardry, they're, they're using technology that they've developed called Unison. Technology. Right. So when you plug a microphone or a guitar into the unit, yes, and you load up one of these things, be it a Marshall JMP or something like a, a you know a Neve console, yeah, it's actually going to load your pickups or your microphone with the right impedance, the actual impedance that the actual real thing would have done. 
Because obviously different pickups so and different amps react are gonna... at the input the same way that the amplifier. So the response you get from the guitar or from the microphone is going to be identical. It's going to be exactly the same to plugging it into the real thing. Because you know, particularly when it comes to things like microphones, like a classic combination is a Neve 1073 with uh, a Norman U87. Right. And the reason that's a, such a loved uh, combination is just because of the way that the console loads the microphone right. makes the mic react in a certain way. Yeah. And it just sounds awesome. So if you put the U87 into uh, the Apollo and then you loaded the 1073 preamp, the microphone would react exactly the same as if you'd plugged it into the hundreds of thousand pound console. And have you you've used a real Neve before, haven't you? I have. And does the Neve in that sound the same as the Neve you've tried? Yes, uh, and if you don't believe me, then you can head over to Rabir's channel uh, where me and him actually did a comparison against the 1073 console with the... Um, with the uh, UAD stuff and could you tell the difference uh, and, and you can A, a be it there and just go and check it out because it's it's actually mind blowing I just so, um, this is too much to bear I can't even so so there's the, there's the thing is it, it's not even just I mean there's bass amp profiles and bass effects there's right. guitar stuff but then it's an entire studio so you've got all of the classic consoles preamps compressors gates reverbs delays has it got distressors then it's got a distressor on it oh man it, it's got Absolutely, it's like going into a world-class studio. Right. And, and what you don't normally find when, you know, there's lots of great plug-in companies, like Waves are a really good company. Yeah. And they Waves do, are great, actually. They are. And, and they do some really great clones of classic yeah. um, analog hardware, in it, and it sounds great. Well, but, we just need to stop and just tell people that we're not being paid to make this video. No, no. We, no, no. This was a video no. that I just decided to make. Yeah, uh, and, so um, this is not sponsored by anybody. No, uh, I mean I'm I'm passionate about the UA stuff because I you know particularly Tom at Universal Audio I've got I've got a good relationship with, and they help me out when I'm stuck with things and yeah, yeah. you know they're just they're just awesome guys and I, I've just invested so I mean obviously I used to have the Cove, and at the Cove I had all the analog stuff the tape machines and yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything and uh, I had to downsize because the landlord sold the property. So I had to get rid of so everything. Much. In fact, you know, I stored a lot of my gear at Rob's old yeah. house in his garage for about a year <laughs> until eventually Rob had to move house and I was like, I just have to get rid of this gear because I don't have anywhere for it. Yeah. And but the cove lives on in our heart stage. It One does. day it'll be a but, real place again. I, I found the UA stuff and bought a unit and I was just blown away because it, it meant that my entire studio, all the amps and everything, all shrunk into just a rack unit. Um, and the other thing that's cool about the twin, if you're using it with the rack unit yeah the twin can be a controller for the rack as well so right. you can actually control the pre preamps and the gains and everything else oh my god with that and there's a built-in talkback mic right so if you're Does actually it make coffee for you as well wipe your ass it, it, it's really <laughs> that's really useful because if you've got you know a, a singer in a different room or in a booth or whatever you can press a little button and talk right. to them and there's an ambient omnidirectional microphone oh in there my that will god and it sounds really good and you can do separate headphone mixes um, in fact, actually, it is a. It's got its own mixer interface, um, separate to whatever work workstation you're using. Okay, so first of all, uh, I just sat down and Dave got me a guitar sound. Yeah. But so the chain of this is we've got a reverb. What's the reverb? It's just one of Universal Audio's. Right. Probably should mention that Universal Audio aren't just a digital company. They they started their roots. Um, uh, you know, way back when yeah. designing analog outboard gear, right? And, uh, and there's you know companies like Yuri who made the original 1176 compressor, which is almost guaranteed to be on every one of your favourite records. Yes, is is now Universal Audio, and they're still making those units. Okay. <laughs> Sounds really good. Um, and what's interesting is it, it captures every nuance. Just 
feel, I, feel, I feel like I'm playing an amp. Yeah. It's, it's really, I mean, it's really giving Kemper a run for its money, I'm just going to say. It really yeah, is. I mean, and, you know, it's... it's I, I, and it should do really yeah but I mean there's there's a different community with Kemper and it, Kempers can give you abilities to do things that this can't do like you can go to a studio and get a tone and go that's that's incredible yes. we'll take a snapshot of that in case we miss something or a file gets corrupted yeah 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 uh, we don't have to get is... that, that particular combo again we can just yeah. load that up and you know but this is a recording studio yes how much does it retail for? Uh, that's a good question and um, we're going to have to find out so yeah as I was saying as Rob's checking up on the price of this unit um, you know it, it is I guess it's going to be reasonably expensive because of what you're getting but actually when you think about it it's going to be um, much cheaper than trying to get any anywhere near that kind of quality and all those processes and that's so the, it yeah. the Apollo Twin Mark II Quad Thunderbolt interface is 1,132 yeah now there's different versions of it there's a dual core version uh, they also do the Arrow If you, in fact check the, the price of the Arrow I'm actually taking the price of the Kemper which is 1,449 yeah uh, I'm obviously looking for non-powered and you want me to look for the what? Uh, it's the Arrow Arrow. Yeah, so the Universal Audio re released uh, a new version of the twin, slightly different. Well, um, that. That's the one. Interest. Now, now this one, uh, you should check out the Arrow as well. That's actually bus powered, so you don't need an external power supply. Much better for throwing in a rucksack. I mean, this is tiny anyway, but you don't actually need a power supply for the Arrow and stuff. So there's a few different changes with that, and it's a little bit cheaper. But. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's crazy, really. And and you can, you know, the racks as well, you can go up to getting eight channels or 16 channels, 32 channels. Right. Now I'm, now I'm excited about guitar racks again. Yeah. I just love having a guitar rack. It was great. Had yeah. my JMP head, my BB Sonic Maximizer and Ted FX and yeah. rack times, man. So All my and, 80s and, brother. And the, and the thing is, when you've got, like, uh, you know, like I, as at home, I've got two chains together, so I have 10, channel, there's ten, uh, 10 channels of inputs. So if I'm recording a drum kit, I could have like API preamps on the toms, I could have a Neve on the kick and the snare, right? Um, and I could have some SSL EQ, uh, and then you know all of these like crazy consoles that are super expensive, and rather than going, oh, I'll go to the studio because I've got a Neve, yes. and then just go, well, everything's going to be Neve, which is great because it sounds great, yeah. but now I, with, you know, with this rack, I can go, yeah, but the, you know, the EQ from the SSL might sound really cool on this. Those of you old enough to have borne witness to the fitness that was Airwolf will remember the co-pilot that I now feel Dave is like. <laughs> <laughs> Dave is the co-pilot and Airwolf. And uh, he's got my laptop, and we're going to switch on and switch off the Neve console so that you can hear the difference in the guitar sound. Yeah, so I'm hitting the preamp pretty hard because the Neve's known for adding a lot of saturation. Yes, um, it's the best kind of distortion pedal, an entire <laughs> desk strip. <laughs> I mean, obviously, normally it's the sort of character that you want to add to a mic to get a kind of like aggressive vocal or a warm or aggressive snare or you know, stuff like that, but works perfectly well on guitar as well. Okay, so, so should we do without first? Yep. That Neve, Dave. Exactly like being in a studio and you got 
you're in the console room and then you've got an amp far away gunned and you're hearing it through the monitors it's exactly how it feels and sounds and it's really exciting yeah it's just great it's like, it I recommend everyone try one yeah uh, and it's really it's the ideal thing as trying to get a, a, an entire studio in one box you've got multiple outputs for different speakers yeah fall to mono and check your phase there's a button for swapping between different monitor setups check um, your audio privilege you can set up headphone mixers there's an entire console um, that you can operate everything from and do mixing. You can record uh, all of the stuff on input yeah. or you can choose to not do that and switch that off so you're just listening to all this effects. In, in. So for, for example, these guitar tones, yeah. you could play along but record the completely dry signal. Yeah. And, like then you a could, DI. and then later in your DAW, you could add the same plugins because right. all of the UAD stuff that you apply on your mixer, you can also pull up in Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools, whatever DIW you, you Are use. you saying this is the one thing you would recommend any junior recording dude? Not even or junior. Or not even junior? It's not, it's not, it's really not like, I mean, that's that's why it's expensive. It's not, it's not really, you know, if you're getting into it, it's great because you can learn. I triggered him with the junior thing. Did you see that? <laughs> well, the thing is, like, it's great because you can learn how, you know, you'll get familiar with how to get your head, you know, how the Neve console looks. Yeah. You know, what the controls are. And when you go to a studio that has a Neve, you'll feel comfortable because it's the set, the layout's the it's same. It's exactly the same. Um, and, and so it's great to learn on, yeah, but also for all the pros that, you know, maybe even work at a full-blown studio, but when they come home, they want to catch up on some mixing or whatever. Yeah. They can just load everything and it's, you know, and the other thing is you can save all of it. It's total recall. So let me recall, let me rephrase the question. Is this the best piece of studio gear for anyone with a home studio? I think so. You heard it there first from Dave. I've been Rob Chapman. Dave. <laughs> See you later.